Hey guys, I'm Faze Ali for All Things Mobile, and today I have a quick review of the BlackBerry Curve 9360. The BlackBerry Curve 9360 is Research in Motion's latest update to the BlackBerry Curve family. So, taking a quick look at the, the, the device, you've got the earpiece, LED or firelight, 2.44 inch screen, the four navigation buttons down here, the call, BlackBerry menu, trackpad, BlackBerry back, and black, and the end key. Under that you've got the keyboard, full QWERTY keyboard, which if you guys can see this, they're all spaced out. It is the curve style keyboard, so it's all spaced out. On the left side of the device, we have just the micro USB jack no left side convenience key. Research Motion has been taking those out of their phone since the original Torch launch, the 9800. Up top, we have the new location of the 3.5mm headset jack. Prior to this, it was on the left side now, it's up top. And here's the one touch unlock lock button. Move on to the right side of the device, there's actually three buttons here. In this location, they're, um, they are used as the volume control, so volume up and down when you're in a call, or volume up and down if you're playing your music, etc. But they also double as the media keys, because you don't have media keys up top here, like you used to in the previous curves, such as the um, 9300. They they have reprogrammed it so that these keys also change the track. If you hold them, if you press the middle button, it'll pause the song or video you're watching, etc. Back here, down here, you have the another convenience key. This is for by default it launches the camera, but you could set this to anything because it's a convenience key. Taking a quick look at the back. We've got the 5 megapixel camera with the LED flash and this camera is the same as the bold 9900 camera so it does not have autofocus but it is a EDOF camera which stands for extended depth of focus meaning the idea here is that if I want to take a picture of something I can take a picture of it and it will be in focus providing it's not very close to me for example if I had this BlackBerry 9300 and I put it halfway across the room I could take a picture of it and it would still be in focus whereas if I put it right here right in front of me and try to take a macro photo uh, it wouldn't work so well. Taking a quick look at the OS this is running the full version of BlackBerry 7 it's not a um, light version of BlackBerry 7 by any means or anything like that so you've got the you've got the separate home screens this was what we've seen in BlackBerry 6 as well but now you can manage these panels so you could turn the panels on or off whichever ones you like so there's a little bit more customization there universal search works as the same let's just type in RAM and then you get universal search on device results as well as extend search so that's also a good feature now they've included voice search in BlackBerry 7 so that's we will actually test that out right now so BlackBerry and you can see it does um, work fairly well and brings up anything to do with BlackBerry so for example in my options there's one option which is BlackBerry ID and pulls that up in Universal Search. You can also extend the search to include other services such as YouTube, BlackBerry App World, BlackBerry Map, Google Local, and Google Search. So that's pretty handy. Another update with BlackBerry 7.1 especially is FM Radio. It also includes FM Radio on board. Other than that, there's very little difference between BlackBerry 7 and BlackBerry 6. The main idea being BlackBerry 7 would be a refresh in handsets and would also provide better specs. 
Now we have the whole mash connections. We've also got mobile hotspot in BlackBerry 7.1, which has been leaked for all the new BlackBerry 7 devices yet right now. So there's that. So you basically have messages, which is kind of like your email messages. They've all, they've all, they're all just there now in one unified inbox. You could also have your separate inboxes. Um, text messages, same idea. You can also get to messages by pressing M. I know, put in your messages. But I've noticed that there's also kinetic scrolling now. So you just, you could uh, do kinetic scrolling, which is kind of fun to play around with because in the older OS versions, you have to actually like manually scroll and not just flick scroll, as some would call it. Contacts calendar hasn't changed much. Um, it's the same native calendar we've seen in BlackBerry 6, nothing too fancy. The browser has actually improved quite a bit. We'll load up the All Things Mobile site. You guys can see how fast this loads up. And you notice there's some UI enhancements, such as the loading bar being integrated with the top here. And you can see that we're almost uh, that we're done loading now. So again, browser, flick scrolling, works well. Um, let's zoom in on some text. Uh, here we go. The Lumia 710, a story we just covered recently. Zoom in, and it wraps around. Zoom in again. Yep. You can also press the Alt key down here. Uh, yep, the Alt key, and go up and down on the trackpad just to zoom in and out. Now, uh, it's easier to do this. I find I find myself doing this a lot more often just by doing this using the Alt and trackpad just to quickly zoom in, read some text, press the back button to get out of there. We will try another website. We will try, uh, let's try cbc.ca. Maybe it's going to give us the mobile site or the full site. Uh, yes, it's giving us the full site, so this will be a little test to see how fast the browser loads. And we're on Wi-Fi because sometimes the carrier networks can be congested and it's unloading. And Wi-Fi gives a more it gives a more fair test. And with Wi-Fi, you get more results that are actually considerable, consistent results actually. So the web browser is improved. Research in Motion states it to be 40% better than the BlackBerry 6 browser and 100% better than the BlackBerry 5 browser. So that's an improvement, definitely. Um, and there's all the native apps, are, like such as BlackBerry Messenger, are, are there. Everything just loads up quickly. It feels really snappy, like if I go into Facebook, and it's an app that I wasn't running before, so it's all, it's all quick. Twitter loads up quickly as well. BlackBerry News is, oh, this is an RSS feed. It's Research Emotions version of their, of an RSS feed. So yeah, it works. Um, and I've noticed with, with BlackBerry 7, it just runs a lot faster. And that's due to the 800 megahertz processor. That's within this phone. So this phone has a 800 megahertz Tavor MG1 processor. There is a graphical processing unit, so a GPU, because this does support liquid graphics. Although there are no details of what the actual GPU is. The screen resolution is actually quite good for the curve. Um, we've been stuck in 320 by 240 land with the curves in the past, except the 8900, which was an exception to that rule. But now we've got a screen resolution that's 480 by 360, so it's on par with the Bold 9700 and the Bold 9780. And the pixel density is, I believe, 243 pixels per inch. So it's a pretty good uh, pixel density. You guys really can't see the um, separate pixels, and this video does not do this camera justice, the screen justice because the screen is quite terrific. Uh, let's, we'll do a quick test with the camera so you guys can see how that loads up. 
So we'll just take a picture of this, the Curve 9300. And you can see it snaps the picture really quickly and the LED flash went off there. So there is the camera. Essentially this is the same uh, curve that we've seen with BlackBerry 6, um, the 9300 with BlackBerry 6, although the upgraded internals really give it a nice speed to it. Everything loads up quickly, easily. It's not frustrating. You don't get the same black clock that BlackBerry users often get. And it's a really nice device. It's quite slim actually. I believe it's only 11 half, 11 and a half millimeters thick. And when we compare it to the to the 9300, we will see there are like you'll see that there are some um, design differences. Um, just more, most noticeably, the bezel is gone here, and now they went for a more tapered look. And then on the sides, headset jack was up here on the 9300, but on the 9360 it's been moved up here and it's not awkward to use. I first thought this would be an awkward placement, although you'll really you'll get used to it really quickly. There's really nothing else about the Curve 9360 that's new or striking. Possibly another striking item would be the mobile hotspot feature. The Curve 9360 was actually not slated to get mobile hotspot although with the 7.1 it does feature mobile hotspot it also features NFC NFC is also featured in the Bold 9900 and this device as well so near field communication basically it allows you to do things such as mobile payments at a uh, MasterCard at a MasterCard location and also there are some locations in the GTA such as transit such as public transit operate operations that do use a, a smart fare card so we could be seeing some of those implementations later on this year when mobile applications do get developed for the BlackBerry platform all in all when we compare it to the Curve 9300 and you and you ask well is it worth the upgrade? And I would say definitely it's worth the upgrade because in the 9300 you have the 624 megahertz processor and only 256 megabytes of RAM, which worked well for OS 5. Like I could boot this up, show you guys it runs fast on OS 5. I can, what's an application? I could just go into contact, I can go into messages, camera, etc. And it and it would work because it's running BlackBerry OS 5. Once you upgraded this to BlackBerry OS 6, you started finding yourself running out of RAM, the phone running slowly, the WebKit browser closing off and saying error page too large to load, and it was it was in a it wasn't a great site. So, but with the new Curve 9360, that doesn't happen anymore processor, liquid graphics, GPU, BlackBerry, OS 7 on board, and there's really nothing else to say about it. it. Just it's an upgraded version of BlackBerry 6. So if you've seen BlackBerry 6 videos, if you if you have BlackBerry 6 on your phone, just note that this is kind of like a upgrade, a minor upgrade. This was this OS was actually called BlackBerry 6.1, but they changed it to BlackBerry 7 because the previous gen. BlackBerry smartphones did not get the update. And I just want to really show you guys the difference in keyboard. The keyboard is actually the largest curved keyboard. Because uh, you'll, you'll notice that the keyboard on the Curve 9360 is also a little bit thinner. It's not as raised. Here's the 9300 curve. Here's the 9360 curve. And yeah, the buttons are bigger. But they also have a a 9900-ish feel to them. Uh, I'd say the best way to explain this keyboard to someone who's ever picked up the phone would be to say it's a combination between this keyboard, which is a curved style keyboard, 
and the Bold 9900 keyboard which is the kind of the mushy keyboard but yeah so Blackberry Curve 9360 micro SD card expansion under the battery cover here and you can expand this up to 32 gigabytes as well as this, this also supports 32 gigabytes and right now this is not a very expensive phone I believe it's still at the price that it was at launch which was $349.99 from Bell Rogers Telus in Canada and the new entrants such as Wind and Mobilicity had offered this phone for $299 Kudo had offered it for $300 but uh, this I picked up the Bell version and this version is unbranded so you don't see any carrier branding at all and you don't see any carrier branding through the software so that's just one thing to note but if you really want to pick up this phone it's going to be about 300 bucks at the cheapest price or 349.99 for an unbranded version my name is Faisal Ali for all things mobile see you guys in the next video